Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's see how it turn equations in, in the Cartesian coordinate system into polar equations. So we have some very familiar equations. How, what, did, what did it look like when we convert them into polar equations? Well, this is the method in which we convert them. We have the general equations where x is defined as r times the cosine of theta and y is defined as r times the sine of theta. Using that, we can go over here and we simply replace every x and y by those and see what we end up with. So in the first equation, we end up with r times the cosine of theta is equal to 2, which means that r is equal to 2 divided by the cosine of theta, or we can write that r is equal to 2 times the secant of theta. So that would be the same equation in polar coordinates with the equation x equals 2. If we have x squared plus y squared equals 16, again, we can do the same thing. x squared will be equal to r squared times the cosine squared of theta plus r squared times the sine squared of theta equals 16. If we now factor out an r squared, we have r squared times the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta equals 16 and of course the cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1 which means that r squared equals 16 or r is equal to 4. On the next equation we have x equals minus y squared so there we replace x by r times the cosine of theta equals minus the y squared which would be r squared times the sine squared of theta. So right away we can see this r will cancel out with one of those and then we want to isolate r, so we're going to divide both sides by a negative sine square and turn the equation around so we end up with r is equal to minus the cosine of theta divided by the sine square of theta. And the cosine over the sine, that's the cotangent, and 1 over the sine is the cosecant, so r can be defined as minus the cotangent of theta times the cosecant of theta. On the next example, we replace x and y accordingly, so we end up with r times the cosine of theta plus r times the sine of theta is equal to 4. We factor out an r, so r times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta equals 4. And finally, r can be defined as 4 divided by the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta. A couple more examples down here. How about this equation? Again, we replace x and y by what they're equal to. So here we get um, r squared. Now let's get rid of this. r squared times the cosine square of theta plus r squared times the sine square of theta is equal to 5k, k being any constant, and x r times the cosine of theta. So right away, we can see that we can factor out an r an r squared, and we have an r on that side, which cancels out, so we end up with r times the cosine square of theta plus the sine square of theta is equal to 5k, and this r cancels out with one of these on the left side, times the cosine of theta. This is equal to 1, so that means that r is equal to 5k times the cosine of theta. And finally, the x times y equals 9, we write r times the cosine of theta times r times the sine of theta is equal to 9. We can factor out an r. Well, actually, that's r times r, which is r squared. So we have r squared is equal to 9 divided by the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And finally, we take the square root. So r is equal to 3 divided by the square root of the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. I guess we can manipulate the denominator a little bit more, but we can probably leave it like that, which is good enough. And there you go, some good examples that show you how to convert from the Cartesian system to the polar system when we're trying to find the, polar, the equivalent polar equations. And that's how it's done.